We want to thank the Lord for giving us this day again to come before him. I want to welcome all of you who are present here and also those who are online to our day six of the camp meeting and also for our fourth devotion during this week. The Lord is great. The Lord will be able to be with us as we worship him this day. We are proceeding with our theme, let God be God. Let God be God. Let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you so much for being good to us. You have woken us this morning. It is not natural. It is your divine power that care, cares for your children. Thank you, God, for being so good to us. We want to get holy words from you. We pray for the power of the Holy Spirit that, Lord, you may never leave us alone and you may speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to look at the main chapter of Second Chronicles, chapter 20, and on a man called... Jehoshaphat, and we will see also some other backgrounds to this man, but I pray that at least we read the first two verses, verse 1 and 2, Second Chronicles 20, verse 1 and 2, it says, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with others and others with them besides the Amorites came to battle against Jehoshaphat then some came and said to Jehoshaphat saying a great multitude is coming against you and beyond the sea from Syria and they are in they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is El Gedi. Let me do verse 3. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat is a good king of Israel and because he's good, the Lord is with him. But the whole nations around him, all the nations around him are coming to fight him. Just imagine if where we are as a nation, all our neighbors are coming to fight with us. How would it be? That situation is very, is very fear, I, 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 terrifying because you can't fight them. All the resources in your country, you can't muscle them and fight all your neighbors. And that is why the Bible is saying, Jehoshaphat feared. And then he proclaimed a fast throughout the, the, the entire nation. A small background that I want to give unto you would start from chapter 17. That Jehoshaphat was a good king of Israel. He loved to go on the ways of his father David. The father was called Asha, but any other king that was, who was doing good was doing like David. So he was 
doing as David did. So in chapter 17, you can see that when he entered the, the, the kingdom, he started to do reforms. He did not follow Baal. That is one. Two, he chose leaders who were spiritual to go to several cities to teach people the ways of the Lord. So because of that, the Lord was happy with Jehoshaphat. And because the Lord was happy with him, when you look at verse 10 of chapter 17, it says, And the fear of the Lord fell among all the kingdoms of the lands that were around Judah, so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and silver as tribute. Jump to verse 12. So Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful and he built fortress and strong cities in Judah. He had much property in the cities of Judah and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. These are their numbers according to their houses of Judah, the captives, thousands. I don't want to, 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 to say many of, many of those things, but the number of the soldiers that he had were 300,000 men of war. Meaning, if it was war, no one would make war with Judah. You can see that this man feared the Lord and the Lord wanted to prosper him. But he made a mistake in chapter 18 that Ahab was leading Israel as Jehoshaphat was leading Judah. So Ahab came to him and asked him, can you help me go and fight Assyria? Then he said, no, we are friends and we are neighbors. There's no way I can not support you. So he accepted then, but said, like David, before we go, let's call prophets to tell us the will of the Lord. So Ahab called 450 prophets, and all the 450 prophets told him, go to war, you are going to succeed. Then Jehoshaphat tells Ahab, that is the whole of chapter 18, that is there any other prophet? Then Ahab says, there is one called Micaiah, but he's always prophesying against me. Then Jehoshaphat insists, please call him. Then he is called. When he's called, he first told him, just go. Then Ahab tells him, how many times have I told you to be telling me nothing but the truth? Then he decides to tell him the truth. He tells him, I saw the armies of Israel scattered. Which means they are not going to succeed. Then Ahab tells Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that this man is always prophesying against me? Then Jehoshaphat tried accepts and goes to war. Then the king Ahab is telling him, me, let me go and be as a soldier, but you wear a kingly robe and remain here as a king. And they are in the war. Then the Israelites were defeated and they are coming to kill Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat cried to the Lord. And the Lord rescued him. After the Lord had rescued him, that is chapter 19, after the Lord had rescued him, sorry, chapter 18, verse 22, for it was when the captains of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel, that is Jehoshaphat, 
Let me do it from 31 so that at least you see. So it was when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat that they said, it is the king of Israel. Therefore, they surrounded him to attack. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God diverted them from him. So it was when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursuing him. Now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between, his joints, between the joints of his armor. So he said to the driver of the chariot, turn around and take me out of the battle, for I'm wounded. Then the battle increased that day, and the king of Israel pro propped himself up in his chariot, facing the Syrians until evening, and about the time of sunset, he died. Ahab died. Jehoshaphat was saved. He cried to the Lord. The Lord saved him. Then, chapter 19, verse 1 and 2 says, Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely in the house of Jerusalem, to, to his house in Jerusalem, and Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore, the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you in that you have removed the wooden images from the land. Let me leave it at that. A lot of background and we have done it. Jehoshaphat is loved by the Lord. He missed in going to help Ahab in going to war. But he is being told, you made a mistake, but a good thing has been found in you that you have done a reform in the land of Judah. But I think because they decided to go to war and they were defeated, when he comes back now in chapter 20, the nations surrounding Israel decides to go to war with Judah. And all the nations are coming. And he remembers that he went to support in the war and they were being defeated. Then that is why chapter 20 verse 3 is saying, Jehoshaphat feared. By the way, you must fear. Because you know if the Lord abandons you, there is nothing you can do. Only with the Lord you can be able to succeed. Our theme for this week, for this morning devotion is, let God be God. Give him his position. You may think you are able to do it. You cannot do without the help of the Lord your God. Things may be strange and fearful, but when you accept to go unto them, meet them with the hand of the Lord, you will be able to succeed. So Jehoshaphat fears and he, he proclaims a fast to the whole nation of Judah. And when they are fasting, his prayer is, verse 5, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand, is there no power and might? So that no one is able to withstand you. You know, when you go to God, first recognize his kingship. Are you not God in heaven? Are you not the king of all the nations? They are coming 
to, to attack me. But are you not their king? Then he tells him, in your hand, is there not power and might? Telling him that I am assured of your might. I am confident of your ability to save. Then he tells him, Are you not our God who brought, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? Are you not the one who drove out nations? And then this land you gave to Abraham and his descendants. And remember, Abraham is your friend. And that friendship is forever. Then, after, when he continues to pray, he proceeds. Let's jump to verse, as prayer proceeds, let's jump to verse 12. He says, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? Oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I would say that this verse is, could be our main text, that verse 12, saying that, O oh Lord God, We have no power. He doesn't think of the 300,000 men of valor that he has. But he's saying, even with the multitude of war, uh, of warriors, I cannot be able to put my trust in them. There is nothing we can do. So he says, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. Our eyes are on you. By the way, in all our problems, there are many of them we don't know what to do. Many financial crises that we don't know what to do. Many health problems that we don't know what to do. Many family issues that we don't know what to do. Many legal issues that we don't know what to do. Spiritual problems that we have struggled with that we don't know what we, we can do. That is when we tell the Lord, our eyes are on you. Lord, our eyes are on you. There is nothing we can do. We have no power. There is nothing we can do. Our eyes are on you. Then the Lord sends to them a prophet to talk to the children of Israel the prophet is called Jehaziel. You can see it in verse 14. Then the prophet talks in verse 15 to them and says, and he said, listen all of you Judah and all his inhabitants, and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the descent of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of 
Jeruel, verse 17. You will not need to fight in the battle. Position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. By the way, the Lord is telling you, after letting him be God in your life, do not worry of what is going to happen. Do not fear. This battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. He says, just stand, position yourself, stand still. Do nothing and wait and see the salvation of the Lord. These things that worry you and you don't know anything you can do to solve them. Tell the Lord, then stand still and wait for the salvation of the Lord. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will open for you a way. By the way, even in sin, something you have been defeated to overcome, tell the Lord, and tell the Lord that in your hand is there no power and might. There is nothing I can do. Save me, O oh Lord. And the Lord is telling you, stand still and see me work the ways in your life. You are having challenges in your life. Tell the Lord, persevere. The night may seem to be long, but stand still. See the direction the Lord is taking to deliver you. In the end, you will have a confession, seeing what the Lord has done, how the Lord has delivered you, and you will understand, surely the Lord is powerful. In the end, you will have a confession. All your crisis, please stand still and wait for the salvation of the Lord. He will be able to bless you. As choristers are coming, that we sing our song, our song 439, I am just pleading with you that let God be God. Situation may be dark. Things may be so difficult. But the Lord is telling you, please wait and see, I am going to deliver you. When it seems to be the darkest, it will dawn in the morning. Any chorus around may come. When it seems to be darkest in the night, it is soon getting to dawn. And the Lord will be able to deliver you. The Lord will be able to take care of you until you will be sure that the Lord is a blessing. The Lord is taking care of you. I will wait till the choristers come. When, the Lord, when God told them that you just stand and see the salvation of the Lord, they began to sing in verse 22, Chapter 20, verse 22. They began to sing and to praise the Lord. Set ambushes against the people who had come against Judah and they were defeated. Verse 34, sorry, 24. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and they were and there they were there were dead bodies fallen on the earth no one had escaped 
When the Lord tells you that he will deliver you, the Lord will deliver you. He will take care of you. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord our God, he is God. He will be able to take care of you, to bless you, to exalt you. The night may be long, but soon it will dawn because the Lord is going with you. Trust him, believe in him.